Hey, this is Sean ZX here, and this will be a quick guide on setting up DNS mask with PXC boot. That way, you can save yourself the time of not having to bring a USB stick to every single uh, server or machine that you want to get set up with an operating system. So, I'll take you through the entire process from setting up the VM to actually um, editing the dnsmask.conf file. So, we're going to start here just by making a VM. If you've never made a VM before, you should be able to just follow along with me here and be fine. Um, you'll, you will need to download this ISO file from um, the, I think it's Canonical or Ubuntu website. I uh, can't remember quite exactly, but you can just Google it. Um, you can do this if you want, but just to show you everything, I'm going to take you through the whole process. This is just the RAM here. Don't really need that much for a PXE boot server, but I'm just going to set it just for speed. So it's like 12, 12 gig, that seems fine. You only need like two CPUs, I would say, um, to make it not painful. I'm just going to do like six for me right now. This 25 gigs is fine. You can do more if you want to have more images served on here. So that's good. And we just want to also make sure that everything is good here. So that's good. This is good. We're going to remove this ISO image after we install everything. Um, that way it doesn't automatically try to reboot and reinstall the OS again. Um, and we are going to leave this empty because afterwards we're going to insert the guest additions ISO just to make things um, easier for us. Um, as far as everything else goes, you can kind of edit these as you want. One important thing to note is that you do want to change this from NAT to bridge adapter. NAT will just have it automatically translate and basically pretend that it's kind of part of the host OS. You want it to have a separate um, IP address so that it can actually exist on the network as its own device. For the MAC address, I like to just set this to a static one that I already know. Um, one should be fine. We'll set that okay, should be all good to go. And then we will have to go ahead and get the install. And I'll guide you through some of the steps as well, the install as well. So we have the install window pulled up here. It's gonna be kind of small. Hit enter. And we can right click out of it, do it to scaled mode at least. Get a little bit nicer preview. Be a little bit blurry though because of the resolution, but we'll fix that in a second. Okay, now so we're at the installation wizard. So obviously we're going to head and install Ubuntu. Speak English, so we'll hit continue. You can get everything fine here. Don't really need any of this stuff. And again, it's going to look kind of stretch out and weird until we get the guest editions put in. But I just have to kind of suffer through it, unfortunately. Although I guess we can, if we actually do this, make it look a little bit nicer. It still, <laughs> still looks like shit. Uh, I'll switch back. And then this is fine. This is warning, kind of scary, but it doesn't really matter for a VM. To continue. And then I set this PXE boot. PXE boot once you're through it, because you can set this to whatever you like. It's doing it this. I'm going to destroy this right after, so it doesn't really matter. And then it'll take like five or ten minutes to go through the whole installation process. So we'll go ahead and uh, skip ahead. See you then. Okay, so the installation's finished now. So we'll go ahead and restart this. Um, and then you'll be able to log in now. So go ahead, go here. And then we're just going to do this so we can actually see some stuff. Okay. So now that that's done, that's pretty much, yeah. So we want to make a directory. Yeah, we want to make a directory called TFT boot. And then we're going to see into that. I always do that. Just as a nervous tick or something. So we're gonna, you're gonna run this command. I will leave it in the description. Don't need to well, run sudo before because we're already in root. So that'll load that into here and you can see that. And then we're just gonna unzip this. And then you'd see everything there. So we'll go ahead and remove this because we don't need it anymore. Everything is nice and tidy now. 
and then so from here let's see i think next we should probably actually get dns mask yeah we'll do that next so let's all dns mask and don't worry about this this is just because we haven't done some other things yet. This doesn't actually mean anything. This was just it trying to start the service and it failed because there was a running process already on it. So speaking of that running process, if we go to here, because that was the DNS process, which will be running on port 53. So we'll grab for 53 here. We don't actually have net tools. So we'll need to first install that. Let that finish installing. screen we'll grab for that and you can see do 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 system d resolve 452 we'll kill 452 and let's just try to start the nest match to see what happens we'll see it fail let it fail because that program still conflicted well huh that's weird didn't we just kill that process Oh, it started back up. That's because we have to actually stop the, because the uh, DNS service is a service, so it's just going to automatically re-enable itself, or restart itself, rather, when it gets shut down. Um, it gets configured to do that. So, we will need to go ahead and stop it, and to stop it, we're just going to use system control, stop, um, system D, and it is resolved. Yeah, so we'll do the status, system D, resolved. And you'll see that it has been stopped. It's inactive right here. Go ahead and stop that. We'll also make sure that we disable it as well. No, I know you can't do that. Okay. All right. So now we actually want to edit the config for DNS mess, make it work all nice and proper. So run this command, although I advise you to actually just fully enter in everything yourself. Um, it's good muscle memory to do so. But I'm just going to run this just to speed things up a little bit. And that'll go ahead and put that in. And we can see that by going ahead over to here. Conf. And this is basically the input that I just put in. So you just want to make sure that yours looks like this. This specifies the network interface virtualized NIC card interface. It's ENP0S3. And you want to make sure that you actually have that one. And if you don't then you want to make that or if you don't you can just adjust this line specifically to be whatever your interface is whichever one's easiest for you um, if you want to see that then we go to interface config all this is the one that i have so it did give me this one by default and it is on this inet right here so i don't need to change the address either if you did want to change the address you would just do config select the interface that you want to adjust and then put whatever the IP address that you want to do. Just make sure it's one that's not conflicting. Um, I'm just going to leave it as 0.13 for right now because I do know my network pretty well and I know that there's nothing conflicting on that interface. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this again. Well, I'll just go through these lines very quickly. So DHCP range, so this is the range that it will actually assign um, in the DHCP scope. So um, when a device boots up, it'll get assigned some IP in the range from 100 to 200. And that'll be the you know ip it gets for when it's getting um the pxc boot pxc boot is going to select that pxc linux dot uh, zero installer file that's back in the uh we'll go here just so you can see it as i'm talking about it it's going to be this that it installs and this is just a i believe this is just a um symbolic link towards a file that's actually down here that's called pxc linux um, so this is not the actual file it's just a symbolic link for it um obviously we want to enable tftp for the tft booting <laughs> then this is the root directory for the tft boot which is that one that we made here um, these are just some extra convigs to make sure everything works properly you don't really need to know anything about this this is just making it so that this doesn't serve as your dns resolver um, we're just going to point it to google's dns server or you can make it to anything you want really um, doesn't matter but you can mostly leave all of this um, static and it'll work just fine out of the box um, but you do need to add this to your again that's the dnsmass.com file um, if you need to adjust anything just use y slash etsy mass.conf if you want to you know actually 
update it yourself, but otherwise you can leave it how I have it set for you here. And this will work pretty well. Put out of that. And that's pretty much it as far as everything goes. Um, let's make sure we have this enabled. And now we just need to start service up as well. And you can see that it's running. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, if you go ahead and start up any machine on your network and you have it set to boot from PXE over everything else, this uh, server here will provide that bootable image for it and you'll be able to install it without having to use like a USB stick and makes it much, much easier uh, to get things going uh, much faster. Um, if this helped you, um, great. Let me know in the comments down below. Yep, subscribe for more content like this and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Peace.